every week. We're working hard to give you the latest weather updates, stories from around campus, and the Pittsburgh area. RMU Live, bringing you the latest news. Good afternoon and welcome to RMU Live. Today is Thursday, February 15th. My name is Colby Sherwin, and today I'm joined with Hannah Shiflett, and here's what's happening now. Yesterday on Valentine's Day, Kansas City Chiefs fans gathered in downtown Kansas City to celebrate another win as the football team brings the Lombardi Trophy upon winning the 58th Super Bowl. As celebrations came to an end, shots were fired near Union Station. Currently, 21 people have been injured. Two remain in critical condition, and there has been one reported death of a popular local radio DJ, Lisa Lopez Galvin. Kansas City Police Chief Stacey Graves has stated that three people have been taken into custody following the incident. The investigation, the investigation onto what happened is still underway. Former President Donald Trump arrived Monday to a crowd of supporters at a federal courthouse in Florida for a crowd hearing in a criminal case charging him with mishandling classified documents and the latest interwining of the court appeals into Trump's election season calendar. Supporters were lined with flags, assembled outside a courthouse barricade, and Trump campaign message to allies on the subject line of, quote, I'm in court again, warrants that an unsuspected opponent wants me arrested and erased off the ballot, end quote. Monday's court date was scheduled as a procedural hearing close to the public to discuss the procedures for handing classified evidence and their trial currently set for May 20th. Following the expulsion of Republican George Santos from the House of Representatives, New York's 3rd Congressional District held a special election this week. Republican Macy Pillup and Democrat Tom Suozzi ran for the open seat in which Suozzi won. This is considered to be a massive win for Democrats as they previously held 212 seats while Republicans held 219. Now Democrats are, upon, are up one seat and Republicans are down one. For Republicans to maintain control of the House, they will need to keep all 218 seats. Based on this recent election, the upcoming election in November will hold higher stakes as the two parties will fight for control over the House. In a historic move, the House voted to impeach Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Morax on Tuesday, signing his handling of the U.S.-Mexico border crisis. This marks only the second time in U.S. history that a chamber has wielded such constitutional punishment against a cabinet secretary, a vote which saw 214 in favor and 213 opposed, when as three Republicans crossing party lines joined all Democrats against the impeachment. Notably, two Republicans and two Democrats were absent during the procedures. Representative Mark Green of Tennessee, the Republican Chairman of the House Security Committee, emphasized that the vote holds Morax accountable. He urged the Senate to conduct a thorough trial and remove Secretary Morax from the office. This development can coincides with a special election in New York's 3rd Congressional District, where voters, cho voters chose to seat former GOP Representative George Santos on the first impeachment article accused Morax of releasing immigrants into the U.S. who should have been detained. In the second elections, he misled lawmakers about security of the border, southern border. Morax is also accused of sustaining con congressional oversight of his department. More than 100 people have been killed in Rafah overnight Monday, including children, as Israel strikes, airstrikes and shelling comes down on the southern Gazan city. According to Palestine Red Crescent Society, the Israeli military has confirmed that the city faced, quote, a series of strikes, end quote in order to rescue two Israeli hostages in a, quote, special operation. The hostages were identified as Fernando Simon Rarin at 60 and Louise Har, 70, who were both kidnapped by Hamas back in early October. Hamas has condemned the attack and called it a horrific massacre against defenseless civilians, displaced children, women, and the elderly. 1.3 million people are seeking refuge in Rafah, with the majority in a cramped tent city. UN Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, Jens Lerick, describes the city as, quote, a pressure cooker of despair, end quote. Currently, there is still no guarantee of a ceasefire or end to the war. A fast-moving northeastern dumped snow on New York City and other major northeast metropolitan areas Tuesday, knocking out power and disrupting travel, work, and school. Here's the latest. More than a foot of snow fell from Pennsylvania to Connecticut. At least 15 inches was reported in three states, Connecticut, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. A total of 3.2 inches fell in New York City Central Park, making it the snowiest day since J January 29, 2022. This sends a record drought of 740 hours of consecutive days since snow 
Two inches or more of snow has blanketed the city in a single day. Snow ended earlier Tuesday afternoon. More than 130,000 customers in Pennsylvania and thousands more in New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Maryland, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, and Virginia all lost power. On Sunday, the Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has declared a state of emergency as an overturned vessel has caused a massive oil spill along the southern coast of the Caribbean country. According to the country Office of Disaster Preparedness and Management, has said that the coast is now blackened by the oil. Several government agencies are now part of the cleanup effort, including over 1,000 volunteers. The Prime Minister stated that the vessel's origin is currently unknown and the situation is still out of control. Investigations are still underway as authorities investigate the origin of the vessel as well as what it is carrying. Oh. And when we come back, we'll be breaking down everything going down in Pittsburgh. Stay right here on RNU Live. If you love them enough to suck the snot out of their nose at 4 a.m., then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Today, we face an unprecedented crisis. Tens of millions of refugees have been forced from their homes. But you can make a difference. Turn disruption and despair into hope and opportunity. Even small amounts make a big difference. Provide shelter, support, or jobs in your community. The more we understand, the greater sense of belonging we create. Act now. Visit supportcrisisrelief.org. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. Families don't have to talk about everything, but they should talk about how to plan for an emergency. Get tips and resources to make your family's emergency plan. Welcome back to RNU Live. A social media threat has led to two changes to at least two local school districts. Monday, the West Miss Mifflin School District said that one of their students reported a threat. To safe, safe to say West Mifflin was not specifically named in the threat, District officials said schools would, know, would not receive any visitors or was previously scheduled. At this point, district says there is no evidence that a threat organized in West, Mifflin, West, West Mifflin. West Mifflin police also have been contacted. In addition, Pittsburgh Public Schools are operating on a modified lockdown threat due to a threat. Modified lockdown threat means only existing appointments or meetings will be honored. There will be no outside activities in the, in the Westmoreland Hill School District. District extra extracurricular activities being used to screen guests, and there will be no increase in monitoring exterior entrances. Superintendent Daniel Castagella said no officials do not feel a threat credible enough to evacuate school or alter our in instructional day. Woodland Hills was also not specifically mentioned in the threat. This week, a man accused of killing a U-Haul employee, stealing a truck, and leading police in a chase back in 2021 has been found guilty of second-degree murder. In July of 2021, Brian Burton was accused of shooting and killing Jacob Jalet, who is only 21. The verdict came at 3 p.m. Friday with family and friends present at the hearing following the verdict. Jeff Jalet, the father of the victim, said, quote, He's an amazing man, just an amazing man. He only was 21 years old. He's the greatest man I'll ever know, end quote. In regards to his son, while well, he held back tears, Burton will be formally sentenced after 90 days. Butler County native Brett Michaels is bringing his summer music festival to Pittsburgh. The Party Gras Festival is stopping at the Star Lake Pavilion on Saturday, July 13th. The lineup features a slew of stars, including former Eagles guitarist Don Fedler, country singer Chris Jason, far foreigners Lou Graham, and D signer of Twisted Sister. They'll all join Michaels up on the stage as he performs his hit from Poison Foreigner and Twisted Sister. The poster pitches the festival as the ultimate summer party with so many hit songs, it's one it's one night. It's illegal. I guarantee their festivals are a modern day throwback to those epic tailgate bashes overflowing with good vibes and nothing but positive energy, said Michaels. From his news release and 
Live Nation. His lineup will only play together five other times with shows in Noblesville, Indiana, Arbata, Georgian, Clarkson, Michigan, Homelo, New Jersey, and Guilford, New Hampshire. Tickets go on sale Friday, February 16th at 10 a.m. with a pre-sale leading up to the date. South Fayette native Justin Watson is celebrating his third Super Bowl win following victory for the Kansas City Chiefs. Having served only six years in the NFL, Watson has won three Super Bowls, two with the Chiefs this year and two in tw one in 21, 2023 and with Tampa Bay Buccaneers in 2021. Watson graduated locally from South Fayette High School in which he led the football team to the Whippeals. Later on at the University of Pennsylvania where he continued to play football and win two Ivy League championships before being drafted in 2018 by the Buccaneers. Watson and his family are now celebrating the latest win with likely hopes that there will be another repeat next year alongside many fans of the Chiefs. There was a big police presence in Meadville on Monday, but it was all for show. Mayor of Kingstown was scheduled to film at BP on Evergreen Avenue on Monday from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. Meadville police residents gave a heads up on Facebook the day before filming, telling them that any police and SWAT activity in the area was for filming purposes only. Meadville police said that they would be on set helping with traffic, controlling any other issues. The Paramount Plus show of Mayor of Kingstown is back in the Pittsburgh area for its third season, starring Jeremy Renner and Danny West. Mayor of Kingstown follows the McCluskey family, power brokers in Kingstown, Michigan, where the business of interaction is the only thriving industry. The third season comes from Yellowstone co-creator Taylor Shorty and Hi Dylan. It's Rutherford's first job since a life-threatening incident involving a snowplow on New Year's Day last year. He told Peeper that he's, quote, a little bit scared to be back at work, end quote, but he's taking it one day at a time. Now, speaking of some fun, Groundhog's Day was two weeks ago, and I went up there with a couple guys from Orange Century Media to see if Phil would see a shadow. Let's take a look and see what happened. Hi, everyone. My name's Colby Sherwin. I'm in Gobbler's Knob here in Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania for Groundhog's Day. We're in the middle of a concert right now, and I'm joined from people. Where are you guys from? Baltimore. Baltimore. Oh, yeah. oh no. Go Steelers. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> All right, and I'm here with? Jenny. All right, and you just moved from Texas, right? Yes. All right, so what does Groundhog's Day mean to you? Fun. Cute stuff, fun, cute stuff, yeah. All right, and do you think Phil's going to see his shadow or not? No. No? All right. All right, and I'm here with? Matt Bulger. All right, and where are you from? I can guess around Cleveland? You would be correct, my man. <laughs> All right, so what does Groundhog, Groundhog's Day mean to you? i tell you what, I go to every inexpensive event I can find, and the only one that compares to this is the Nathan's Hot Dog Eating Contest. And this is right there, my man. All right, and is Phil going to see a shadow or not? Uh, I don't even know what the hell it means, so whatever. <laughs> we don't have a prediction, thank you. All right, and I'm here with... Josh Farkas from the Punxsutawney Groundhog Club. So what does Groundhog's Day mean to you and what's kind of your role? Well, it's absolutely amazing to be here. If you guys could pan around and see the thousands of people that are here at 5 a.m. and it's only gonna get larger. So it's the draw of the crowd from all over the entire country and the world. There are people here that came from Czechoslovakia by themselves for this. It's insane. If you walk through the crowd, people are from every state, tons of countries, and it's a, a great family-friendly friendly event that is free. It is free to be here right now. It costs you no money to come to Groundhog Day. So we always pride ourselves in that, being a nonprofit organization, just to put this on every year. We could very easily charge to get in the gate, and we won't do that. So we welcome everybody any year to come down and check us out. If you guys are Robert Morris, you're what, an hour and 45 minutes away? Yep. yep. All right. And then is he going to see his shadow or not? What do you think? Well, here's the, here's the issue with the shadow. Look at the lights. There are so many LED lights here that that always offsets the chance of an accurate prediction. However, Phil is always 100% accurate. So this year we adjusted the lighting some. So hopefully when he gives his Groundhog Ease talk with the president, the president will understand 
that there is no shadow. That is our goal. We do not want a shadow this year. All right, thank you. Thank you so much. All right, and do you think he sees his shadow in a few hours? I'm going no shadow. All right, no shadow here. All right, I don't know if you can see, but we have t-shirts flying all over the place right now. We have people from Texas. We have Browns fans who have no idea what the heck is going on tonight. We interviewed a guy with a top hat. It has been a crazy couple of minutes here. Now, Garrett, you're working as a reporter today. Tell me, what does Groundhog's Day mean to you? At first, actually, I would say up until about 4 a.m. today, Groundhog's Day mean, I meant absolutely nothing to me. But I came to Punxsutawney, and I got to tell you what, it means absolutely everything. This might be the second best holiday behind Christmas. You've got to be here to believe it. It is quite the experience. Now, my brother, will Philium the Groundhog see his shadow? I'm going to go with what the, the Top Hat guy said and say... Phil's 100% right, but I think with all the lights, he'll probably see his shadow. So, yeah, we'll go with that. I got one more question for you. If our viewers don't know, Phil has a magical elixir that allows him to live for seven more years. Are you going to find it, and are you going to drink it? There's a lot of things I want to... Um, I, I want to learn from Phil, but I don't know that I'll ever be able to. So, I, ho I just hope. My answer is I hope. All right, now... The man who had those beautiful shots you're seeing is right here, Josh Woodman. Josh, how are we feeling on Groundhog's Day? I feel fantastic. It's always been a dream to be here, to finally be here right now. It's a dream come true. I'm making my parents proud here. Now, Josh, you seem like you like Groundhog's Day, so tell me, my man, you're the number one Groundhog's Day fan of Army Century Media. What does it mean to you? It means everything. It's just a silly little holiday. People can come out and have fun. Everyone is out here having fun so far. We didn't even get our media passes. We're having a great time. So uh, it means every, it's just a fun thing we can, everyone can keep doing. We can pass on generation to generation. All right, Josh, I have to ask you the million dollar question. Aliens got the laser pointing at the earth. You gotta hit this shot. Will Phil see the shadow yes he will there's your prediction from josh josh fantastic job having a hell of a time out here with you big dog yes sir yes sir can't wait to do it again next year Woo, we started this interview off getting photobombed by ravens fans fire just went off behind me i'm gonna say groundhog's day a little similar to garrett didn't mean as much till i got here but you have to see this to believe this beautiful atmosphere here we got people watching <laughs> I'm going to have to say Phil won't see a shadow. But what this weather did not provide is a shadow or reason to hide. Glad tidings on this Groundhog Day. An early spring is on the way. But for our new Century Media, I'm Colby Sherwood, and I hope you enjoy this Bobby Moe on the street. And Phil will not see his shadow. I just have to say I was right. Hannah, we did not get our media pageants, but it was still pretty fun. Well, you know, there's a lot that's going to be coming up, especially after now we're going to be having a very warm spring. And coming up next, we're going to be talking about the Super Bowl and how it actually broke records in the medias. And a new film by Jenna Ortega that is actually stirring up some controversy all right after this. Do you want to meet a family with a transgender kid? Here we are. Max loves to do backflips. Max loves to play his ukulele. Max loves to just be a kid and just be himself. When I found out I was pregnant, all I really wanted was a happy, healthy, whole child. And that's what I got. I think it's really important for people to know that trans kids don't have a political agenda. They are just kids. Like any parent, we love our kids unconditionally and we will never stop fighting for them. Stand with us, protect our families. Don't do that. No. Don't hit your brother. Ooh. Not again. What did I tell you about playing in the mud? Ugh. Raffy, not so close to the pool. Wait! Frankie, happy. What are you doing? We told you never to touch the gun! I'm sorry, I didn't think it was. 
that big of a you deal. You could have hurt yourself! Safely store your guns. Unload, lock, and away from ammo. Welcome back, everybody, to RMU Live. This past Sunday, households across the U.S. tuned in to watch the, first, the 58th Super Bowl. According to Nielsen Fast Nation data and Adobe Analytics, history was made as this year's Super Bowl averaged 123.4 million viewers on all platforms. This year's Super Bowl was broadcasted on CBS, Paramount+, Plus, Nickelodeon, Univision, and streaming platforms like NFL+. Plus. CBS saw a total of 120 viewer, million viewers during the game, making it the largest audience to ever see watch a single network. Super Bowl 58 is now considered the most watched television broadcast since the Apollo 11 moon landing, which attracted between 125 to 100, mil, 100 million, 50 million viewers on multiple networks. CBS parent company Paramount stated over 200 million viewers saw the Super Bowl across their networks, which is estimated to be a 7% boost compared to last year's Super Bowl on Fox. Sticking with the big game, a massive part of the Super Bowl is the movie trailers, shown a few times that you may have seen on game day, were Despicable Me 4, yes, the minions are back again, starring Steve Carell, Quist Kristen Wiig, Will Smith, Sofia Vergara, Cole Feynman, Stephen Colbert of all people and Joey King. Gru, played by Garel, and Lucy, played by Wig, have a new addition to their family, Gru Jr. They are forced to go on a family-run adversaries, Maxi Lemal, Farrell, and his feminine fertile girlfriend, Vergara. The movie is set to hit theaters on July 3rd. The Fall Guy is about a movie about making movies, starring Ryan Gosling, Emily Blunt, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Hannah Wigman, directed by stuntman Directed by stuntman turned acclaimed action film movie maker David Lynch. The Fall Guy follows Colt Tevers Gosling, a longtime stuntman who's working on a movie made by his ex girlfriend Blunt, where he's tasked by finding a massive movie star, Ronely doubles for Tom Ryder Taylor Johnson. The Fall Guy opens in theaters May 3rd. On one that we know very little about is Deadpool 3. Never one for humility, Ryan Reynolds' Deadpool declares himself to be no longer, no more less than Marvel Jesus and the movie trailer for his third outing as the Merc with a Mouth, but for first as an official part of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. This movie also marks the return of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine to the big screen after he supposedly bid farewell to the character in 2017's Logan. Although it has been assumed that the movie would be just called Deadpool 3, this trailer reveals an official title that speaks to promise both a co-star of award-winning award Succession star Matthew McFadden is also along the ride for playing Ativia, a brutant who seems to be in charge of incorporating Deadpool into the MCU. Continually also talking about guerrilla marketing, Ryan Reynolds' wife, Blake Lively, was right next to Taylor Swift in her box all Super Bowl long. Finally, if Ryan Reynolds, Steve Corral, Kaylee Filming, John Kurzinski, Fiona Shaw, Phoebe, <laughs> Phoebe, Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Louis Gorsuch Jr., and Leonard Kim and Le Elijah Colleen Zaz, Filming stars a young girl who can see people's imaginary friends works to reconnect forgotten ifs. The kids' film opens in theaters on May 17th. Jenna Ortega, who is well known for the Netflix series Wednesday, is starring in a new movie called Miller's Girl. Upon recent release, the movie, the film, is facing harsh backlash. The film is about a student with a talent for writing who begins to get special treatment from their teacher. The teacher, played by Martin Freeman, realizes the relationship is becoming inappropriate and attempts to sever the relationship. However, Ortega's character alleges that relationship was beyond normal and threatens his career. According to viewers and statements online, watchers fear that the film may be romanticizing and even validating the relationship between a young woman and her high school teacher. Other viewers, however, are stating that they will watch the film only for the actress and hope to see her in other films and TV shows such as Beetlejuice 2 and the second season of Wednesday. The Traveler's Boston Logan International Airport 
said the back contained a dried fish, but upon further examination, airport's agent discovered that it was in fact a mummified monkey remains, which includes a head to belong a monkey. U.S. Customs and Border Proclamation said in a statement that the incident took place on Thursday at a security screening for a passenger at Taney Air Officer named Buddy sniffed out the dead dehydrated monkey from inside the luggage belonging to a traveler who recently returned to the U.S. from the Democratic Republic of Congo. Raw or minimally processed meat from certain wild animals otherwise known as bush meat is not allowed to enter the U.S. largely out of health concerns. The traveler on Tuesday carried about eight pounds of bush meat. The Center for Disease Control marked it destruction according to the CB CBP. Airport agents around the country have in encountered a variety of meats and 2022 agents at Washington Daly's airport confessed charges bait. 2019 officers O'Hare International Airport included a 30 pounds of raw meat. Wow. Yeah. That a monkey? Yeah. Oh, not the monkey. Yeah. I, Poor monkey. I don't. They're just cute little creatures. They're just bouncing all well, the time. Well, not that monkey. That monkey was a little old and a little dried. That's sad. <laughs> I, well, I don't know about you, but I'm kind of excited to see Miller's Girl. You know, I didn't really hear anything of it. I saw Jenna Ortega, and it, it sounds interesting. Probably not for me, um, yeah. but... You know, Justin Watson winning another Super Bowl for the Chiefs. Speaking of Super Bowl, it's pretty, pretty interesting having three rings. Yeah, the Super Bowl, honestly, I actually enjoyed it this year. I'm not a huge fan of the Chiefs, but I'm going to watch it next year, that's for sure. All right, hopefully the Steelers are in that game. But for everybody upstairs, Finn Lyons, our producer. I'm Colby Sherwin. She's Hannah Shiflett. Thank you for watching RMU Live. We will see you next week right here on RMU TV.